Well, hello and welcome back to my channel. I'm Michelle Holden, the artist behind the Intuitive Abstract Art Journaling um, process. And for this week, we are going to start with some colors that I put down from last week's video uh, color palette. And as you can see, um, I used, uh, this is cadmium yellow deep, yellow oxide, some orange. It is cadmium orange hue. And you can get even a little uh, more earthy colored oranges. And of course you can mix. And that's where we're headed in the new year. We're going to be doing some mixing. And of course, I love my Brer when I roll it on the glass palette and just use leftover um, paint and it's a great way not to waste. So I'll just flip this book. This is almost finished. So it is the, uh, some of you were asking, the watercolor uh, Canson, 140 pound, nine by 12. And then when I tape them off, they are uh, really nice. There's a little bit of warpage, but not nearly as much with a uh, lighter weight paper. And um, I tape them off to an 8x10. I still, um, uh, since this is all taped off this book, that's why I'm keeping them all that way. And I only have... Let's see, today's and three more to go. And then we're gonna start. And that's almost perfect for the new year. Um, of course, I work on my other smaller ones. Um, and we are going to really get into listening to our intuition. Um, I'm just gonna straighten out my camera here just so there's no warpage. I don't usually do it while I'm recording, but I just noticed that corner is just a little wonky, but that's okay. So I go ahead and do a few pages. Of course, the, that was the last three. And I use pencil and then I use a lighter medium. This is pouring medium. And I'm gonna show you why we're using that this week. I'm going to add a new tool to my bank of tools. Actually a couple. And when you do this, there's no thought. Um, actually, there was a little thought. I wanted it horizontal with a little vertical. And when you do that, you see how it almost pre-divides in its own intuitive manner the quadrants of the page that may or may not stay that way. So that's really, really a good thing to know. Um, I plan to use my all course my Brer. And I'm using these um, just very inexpensive, really too expensive, uh, because they're from the dollar store. I was there looking at stuff for my students and I thought, oh, let's just grab those. Just because they're flat and if I, if I use them in a dry brush kind of way, um, I'm going to compare using these to a dry brush, uh, a regular brush. So we'll try that out. And it probably won't matter, but you never know, okay? And finally, I've got my fine tip um, little bottles with the metal tip, and I'm gonna start with those first. I may or may not use my Brer, but any of you, wow, what a mess trying to fill them up. Um, I don't have these a, a little miniature funnel that I might've thought I needed. I didn't want to add water to this acrylic because I didn't, and I'll probably use it up very quickly and it won't matter, but I was using the tip. Uh, this is the Liquitex Basic Acrylic Fluid. And I was, of course, I unscrewed the lid and tried to ease it in there and it was okay. So my ratio is uh, one to one with black and this um, Michael's 
Canada uses uh, the, their brand is Artist Loft, just a pouring medium. Just because I wanted to just experiment first. And then I'm going to finish showing you what I have out. And maybe we'll get to the inks. I know I've had them here and I didn't get to them last week. I love this dark brown. And just for the drops, because they're unplanned. So that's my thing. Um, of course, I'm using stencils because they're they're um, they're hard edged, and they contrast nicely with a soft edge. This is uh, from a lettering um, selection, uh, the cardboard style. Um, I like when it does build up with paint because it does make it a little stronger. But if you can find plastic letters, um, like these ones, these are super large and the fine line is a lot better because I've had mine, of course, rip, but I still use them. So, so that stencil and maybe some letters, of course, my organic dots from Stencil Girl and maybe some maybe this one because i really like um, um i might end up just writing the word if there's a word or two that calls you know that speaks to me i will uh, i'll use it and i'm going to just use remember last week and the week before when i showed you um how i was wiping off brushes and um color shapers and the brayers and rolling on and just sort of building up some interesting layers. So I might use that uh, for making your own collage, which is very organic. And that's, I'm starting to find out that's what I'm really, I really like doing. So in the beginning layers, I'm noticing when I go back and do some reflection, I really like using the uh, a more transparent collage. So this is palette paper, you know, the palettes that you peel, and it's semi-transparent. And I might use just a section of that. I might use hole punch. This is a smaller one. This is the other. Oh. I keep hitting my lights. It's just one of those days. Two inch and three quarter inch. And of course, I love using pencil work to start off. It just activates the, uh, it just gets things going in the line. I'm also going to use this very thin brush in an uncontrolled way. And I think that's it. So, I'm hoping this video isn't as long as the last two, which had been an hour. And I am not going to speed this up. If it's around 20 minutes, I'm already, I'm looking at my phone, it's already eight minutes in. But, uh, so let's get going. So welcome, if you are new to the channel, I am all about layers. It's all in the layers, one layer at a time which seems to be something that I found helps me get rid of or let go of these outcomes. There's no pressure. It helps, you know, all of these things that hold us back. And uh, I hope um, you follow along with me, uh, subscribe, and uh, sign up to my emailing list. And uh, because new things are coming in the new year. Uh, like I said, my um, there's much more coming. So let's get on with the video. Mm, definitely going to try that out. That is not palette paper. It is um, tracing paper but a very thick kind, and I know this is a special, um, special word that I forget, but that's okay. All right, so let's try um, this tool. I don't know, I'm just not even gonna think. So when you're setting up, notice I have everything that I might use 
um, which is sort of slightly off camera. Up here, I have my black and white on my left, blues or any other colors that I might want to use. The more immediate colors are going to be here, so I can just put them on my palette. And I'm going to use this bright yellow in a moment. I even have a little Lego piece. So if I dab some colors here, I'm going to use re repetition uh, line and pattern for this piece. So let's just see. And you'll find that each tool, <laughs> oh, there we go. I thought it was clogged up already. Now, I'm tempted to go over it with my brayer, but it will take away the thin line. So I'm just going to try this because it'll take forever to dry. When I'm working not on a video, that's when we can try things even further. Oh, interesting. And now look at my collage piece. So that is definitely going to be a new tool for my collage making, which is coming up in a new series. So uh, with very minimal tools, this of course is something special that you can order the set on Amazon. I am not an affiliate, but I plan to be in the future. Now look how thin these lines are in contrast with the thick and I love that and you know high contrast early on if you are um, loving those transparent layers so not transparent enough so I'm going to move my piece of collage that is still wet and this is either tracing paper tissue paper or um, deli, deli wrap paper. And I'm, oh, I'm loving that. Yeah. So I'm just going to dry this a little and I'll be right back. Okay. So, um, that's, you'll see me in the video when I do that. So it's not tacky. It's perfect. So I think... I will come in with some very transparent layers and those are the colors. I'm just going to move them to the side so there's less clutter for you. And I'm just going to, excuse me while I just do that. There we go. So. So that's right out of the tube. I'm starting to not want to do it right out of the tube. Um, so I'm going to add a little black. Which is interesting. So when I added the Mars Black to the Cadmium Hue, I'm getting, here we go. Notice I'm, I'm learning, and this is just over time. And we don't even want to think that much, uh, especially when you're starting out. Uh, my advice is to not worry about composition. It is a learned thing. And I use three simple comp compositions, Quadrant, all over and horizontal and uh, see how watery that is I love it so since it's a little green from the black I'm going to take that notice this line it's very interesting now I know it's not going to be the same but oh close enough I was hoping for that 
Um, I used to be a watercolor landscape artist, and I used to use the area that I live in to paint and, of course, sell my work and everything. And, of course, I still want to sell my work, but right now we are in a different mode and using more using acrylics more like watercolor I think that's where I'm also headed so um, have you used watercolor and would you like to learn more about it especially when you use the paper to reflect its white through the color um, that is a great way using that combination of techniques and and uh, materials to create um, a luminosity like really strong light within the work and uh, that's what my fascination always was and I think it's sort of coming back now see how I just did this brayer here and now it's this really cool shape well you can't plan that and that's what using um, your intuition, your following, just your gut reflex, your response. And that's all it really is uh, at times. But there is a lot more to it than just that. And there's a lot more to following your intuition. There's so many benefits. I've been doing a lot of research and uh, it is incredible. There's so much out there. And um, in so many different realms. Okay. Oh. I think it's time for this one. Hmm. Interesting. Possibly. Now, it might be too early for that. But I might want... I just hopped over to my supply cart to get some more fresh makeup sponges. Oh no, we won't use the makeup sponges. I said we were going to try a new tool today. So where did it go? Where did the big one go? This is the medium one. This is the small one. Little brush. There it is. Okay. So I'm going to just dab it, you can see, now this is a fluid paint, so it's not really, really, really thick, but let's see what this does. So this is like a stamping tool, and notice I'm putting a little bit, and I'm just making like a, a shape, I don't want it rectilinear for this. And it's a very thin, but I want it to go across. Oh, I like that. And see how the ones that are sort of faded, they didn't get a lot. And it's just sort of a sprinkle and it's really behind this. I'm really loving this. This is like, sort of like writing or sort of like a symbol. It, it just has that feeling. And using this little tool, I'm sure that there's, I have to put that lid on so it doesn't dry. I'm just gonna add a little bit more. I don't wanna overdo it either. <coughs> Ooh, 
let's see if we can repeat that. Yes. Okay. So that's where I was thinking, but I don't know if I want that. Nope. Too clashy. So I think there's enough yellow in here. So now we're going to tone it down a little bit with some white. And my color shaper. Okay, I didn't need the hair dryer that time. I like that blue being in the foreground. And mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. a little yellow got in there. That's really cool. So when it, you want to lift some more off, you can just spray it lightly. And then look what happens. So you can control it even more. Some of that black's coming off those dots, so I won't rub over it anymore. And we're good. I just went to grab some orange and blue because I like this orange and blue thing going on. And hmm, that's interesting, but it covers that, so I don't really want to do that. So let's move it up. So this is warming that lemony kind of yellow effect that happened with the black and the yellow. Mars black and cadmium yellow. And I sort of like that. Just adding more. Okay. Here's a taste of some larger.
Ooh. See how that line follows that one? And I chose this very open piece, which is just made with brushes. So I'll sit and do a bunch of those uh, sort of systematically. So you can just get into the mode and pay attention to your mark making. And it's just copy paper, but of course, I plan to experiment with different kinds of paper. But what I like to use is what I already have. And that's key to this process that I use. And if you've noticed, I'm not, I'm lessening the amount of ephemera to my work, because that's really more mixed media, when what I'm after is the, the abstraction to show along with your own intuitive, your own true marks, colors, your voice, and putting those two things together really creates uh, unique, um, unique art. And it's all about the process, not so much the end result is what I'm trying to get across. And I think the next book that I do, the next series, it's, it's going to be very process driven because I'm going to time myself. Uh, I might do, I think 20 minutes would be really awesome. 10 minutes is a little too, too quick, you know, for, for my, uh, to show you for a demonstration, but I think I could get a lot done without thinking and see how I'm using those different exercises. And there's a lot of more intuitive exercises that you can, that I'll be showing and demonstrating uh, in 2024 coming up. So I'm really liking this and I'm liking that it's pure white. I'm not going to go over it with yellow. And I really don't want to put too many more layers on this piece. So let's find some collage. Nope, notice. So now, I love it, but now there's too much going on. What seems to be the predominant element? It's the line, the swirling line. So what would be a great opposite? Well, I'm so tempted to use this little Lego piece, so let's just give it a try. And I'm gonna use black and white as a stamping tool. Not used a Lego piece before, but I'm liking this, filling this up just with a light pattern. And I am gonna overlap, but it's not gonna interfere or cover up my line. It's going to bring the eye down. Cool. Okay. Now, let's see what that would look like in a white. Hmm. Where would it show? Would it show up enough? What if I did that? Okay, there we go. There we go. This is cool. Oh, I love it. Notice it's bringing the eye across. I'm loving that white against these black lines. There, that's what I was looking for. So I had to put a lot more paint on. It's the first time I've used a Lego piece. Oh, that is so cool. And I like it because it's, it's dots, it's circles, it's dots. I just love that. So I'm gonna overlap it a little. There we go. So I'll just dry that. So 
I'm loving the transparency of this piece. That's very interesting. But I think it needs to be overlapped. But in which way? Ooh. So that kind of thing. Yep. So I like the overlapping here. And I'm gonna use a little glazing, just this area to give it some base, some, some weight, I mean. And I love how this little hole punch and this turned out, just totally unexpectedly. Okay. It's just a little bit of glazing. Right. You can lift that. So I'm using really thin layers today, and I love that. Okay. I don't want to do much more to this one. So I'm thinking I want to do some ink drips. And this is sort of green, so I don't know if I'm going to like it. But let's keep it inside the blue. It's a little green, so let's just see. Nice piece of... I like to use noose print because it's more absorb um, absorbative than the other. Ooh. Now it's now you've got primary and secondary. Let's see where else we could put this part of it. Cool. Maybe even there. Cool. Okay, Ooh, we'll try that. You see, I didn't. I have to remember not to talk during their drawing. What I said was that this is calling for just a little bit of glaze, and I think I'm going to go orange with that. So that's the cadmium orange hue. And just a little bit. <clears throat> you never know, I might be wrong, I might ruin it. So just in case I am, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to put a little bit of this clear, that's a lot, of course, on this area, on this whole area. So this is a good way to protect some delicate, um, whoops, oh, look at that interesting mistake. Okay, and I'm putting that on, ooh, wondering. That's opposite, so I thought, oh, let's go with that. So let's dry this layer. So that is a high gloss medium, gloss medium. Uh, it's a fluid, yes. So it's regular. I don't know if it's regular or if it's fluid. It doesn't say. 
uh, but Liquitex is their regular gloss medium. And I'm just going to get a little bit of orange. I know you can't see. I'll move that over. Here it is on my brush. And I'm going to see. Interesting. So now I don't want it all covered. So I'm going to call, I'm going to gradate it, meaning going from a strong or a value to less or dark to light, light to dark. Gradation. Okay. Wow. So now that it's busy, I'm going to make some quiet areas. I'm going to use white and black. Okay, I probably could quiet it, quiet it down a bit more, but if you're using a journal, um, you probably want to say, once you finish a page, let it dry overnight or for whatever length of time is needed, and then come back with some fresh eyes but remember, we don't want to be, at least my opinion is, we don't want to be altering them too much because it was in that, in that state, that mode, that led you to creating that. So if, we f if we're fiddling around with them too much, then we're doing that thinking process when we don't want that because intuitive art making, be it in journaling, abstract form, whatever, is is just to, is the allowing of things to happen. So, I am <clears throat> just, and then when you do your glazing, which this is what this is, mostly I use a darker tone Payne's Gray, Black, Quinacridone, um, etc. It really then starts, these shapes start happening because you're dealing with the positive and negative space. Yeah, I think I'll go. That needs a little lifting. So you can also lift with a brayer, which can create 
some interesting textures. This is just a damp rag that I'm using. That's my tape, so you won't see that. Yeah. So, I'm thinking it doesn't need any words, but say if I was to use words, I think I would love to use this. Or no, 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 no. My white. Okay. And I might not like my writing at the moment, which I don't. It sort of it takes it away. Sometimes with abstraction, I don't want any other interference. I want it just to be. So then I'll just go like that. And I think I'm gonna leave it. No words are needed for this piece. So let's dry it up for the big reveal. down here. One more. And one more. Mm. Notice the Either you put the dots farther apart, or close together, it creates a different kind of energy. And I'm not going to overdo them this time. But I do want the eye to come down here. And the orange is speaking to me. I think I want a little more focus on this one. And I think that's it. And we'll finish with what I always love to finish with, if I can find it. My splatter brush. So just here, a little bit. I like to use my scissors. It's when you hit it against a harder object rather than your hand, it creates a different, different effect, at least I think. There we go. Notice I push that back and this came forward more, which I'm liking. A little more attention, so now you've got this flow going on. Okay. So I don't have many pieces of collage to worry about with my, oh, especially if you come to the edge neatly. Um, you don't really need the X-Acto knife to trim. Well, maybe a little bit there, but not bad. All right. So, and here we are. So I hope you enjoyed this video and look how just organic and sporadic uh, using your intuition just to, you know, just to follow it and let things happen. You can't plan these things and I'm really liking my new tool. So um, Amazon, you can get sets. There's so many, there's, there's four, there's 10. And it's just this little metal needle. And it, they do come with a little lid that I will put back on. So I save this. Really liking, especially if you like line. And I love line. So I'm going to call it 
exploring line today. Okay, and it is for, I can't believe it, December 17th. Okay, um, please uh, hit that subscribe button, share, and hop and join my email list because now I have two coming out a month and um, it most likely will be um, about techniques, mindset, the philosophy of intuitive abstract art journaling, and more. So I will see you in the next video.